and welcome to a Seismic Cinema podcast. So put your feet up, but make sure you've got some socks and shoes on. Grab the reins of your dragon tightly and prepare to try and remember all the kids' names for the last, for the last, for the next 50 minutes. What was the socks and shoes thing? It was to do with the feet in episode nine. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I like how like all the weird stuff happens in this, this show and a lot of people get offended by the feet thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um I I just wasn't quite sure what was happening the first year, but that was that was pretty weird. So welcome back, Paul. It's been been a couple of weeks. I know. I'm feeling a bit rusty. Uh, are you sure you like having me back after interviewing the superstars last week? <laughs> well, I was um a bit starstruck by Talking to people who worked on the original Star Wars movie and hearing about all their experiences, so it's it's nice to have someone a bit more on my level. Oh, that was quite funny. See when they're talking to you and they're going, and you're like, "Oh, I've not seen that movie. I've not seen that movie." I'm going, "I've seen all these movies." <laughs> and I was well, listening back. Well, where were you? <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Yes. So probably should introduce ourselves. So yeah, we're Seismic Cinema for any new watchers and listeners we're two scottish pals who like to talk about movies and tv and yeah i don't think i've got much more to add but yeah check us out check us out and check us out on spotify um yeah so um, check out our that's what we're talking about our discussion with a uh, terry bowen or bowen and um bruce logan that was our most recent podcast, so make sure you check that out if you haven't already. Yeah, no, it was definitely definitely a good one, Colin. So I'm I'm quite chuffed that you got got through that solo as well. Yeah, and um, once you once you went solo once, you kind of get used to it. So, no, I don't think I could have done it. That's why I was saying it somewhere on Twitter. I was like, see if I had to do solo shows, I'd be terrible at it. Well, you can't even do it because you don't know how to run the stream yard from this end. You're right. So <laughs> it never happened. Thank <laughs> God. Right. So let's do our our new segment. What have we been watching? So, Paul, what have you been checking out, movies and TV wise, and the recent recent past? Uh, did you go see Halloween Ends in the end up? No, I didn't make it in the end. But I heard it's not great. It's not great. Um, it just seemed like a very random end to the trilogy. It just seemed like everything was shoehorned in, and it was just very weird. I was watching it and going, like, what the hell's happening? Like, I, thought, I just didn't understand. It was just a really weird direction it went in. So if you're going to watch it, I'd watch the whole trilogy before mm-hmm. you watch it. But, um, yeah, been, because it's Halloween night, I've been watching quite a lot of horror movies. Um watched VHS. No, not VHS. I'm talking about lying. I'm totally that's, lying. It's not VHS. That's a video cassette. It's a horror it's a horror movie. It's a, but it wasn't that. It was um Hell House L L C that's what I watched. Um because I've been watching I've been listening to Happier podcast and they've done a found footage um episode. Kind of like ranking their top found footage uh, horror movies, and Hell House LLC was actually pretty good. Um, starts off good. the m- The middle's a bit kind of shaky because it's like getting to know the characters and all, just kind of goofing about. And then the end's good. It's, it's pretty creepy. And um, yeah, me and Scarlett watched it, and Scarlett wouldn't go down the stairs by herself. <laughs> Where can you check that out? Uh, what was that one? Uh, the fire stick. Hmm. <laughs> the dodgy fire stick. Oh, yeah, shut up. <laughs> um, yeah, so watch that. And what do we watch? We're halfway through watching Barbarian. I saw that advertised somewhere and it's... Well, it's... It's advertising said it's good, so yeah, yeah. I think it when it was out in America like last month or something, and we're kind of halfway through it. Um, 
and it's good so far. So yeah, I would uh, go aliens, lights out, and just watch it. Okay, try my best. What about you? What are you watching? Um, I did. I had a wee spell where I was getting through a few films, but I've been focusing more on TV in the last week anyway because I've. I was obviously off work last week, uh, last two weeks, and I'll be back this week. So I've not got as much time now, but I'm still batting my way through Cobra Kai, which is rapidly becoming one of my favourite shows. It's You should definitely check it out. It's brilliant. Um, I'm, on season, I'm near the end of season three right now, and mm-hmm. Johnny Lawrence, if you remember the name from um, The Karate Kid, he's got to be one of my favourite all-time TV characters. He's absolutely hilarious. Oh geez, oh that's an that's an endorsement. Uh, he was in um, he was in How I Met Your Mother actually. It was in it was the one of the weddings. Oh, no, okay. There's a few of them. William uh, Zab- Zabka. So yeah, I've been binging that. Uh, we finished the the Watcher, which I quite enjoyed. Oh, what did you think at the end? I didn't mind it because it was never like solved in real life, so it, it wasn't really ever going to be solved. I hated it. I felt like I'd just been totally. Um, well, it's a true story that didn't have a resolution, so I don't know what you're expecting. Oh, well, I just wanted there to be. I wanted to actually find out who done it. And you can because they didn't find it out. It's a true story. They could just made it up. Otherwise, there's no point in making it. No, no I actually liked that they. They went against the grain and didn't really have a resolution. I thought it made it stand out a wee bit, but it's all about opinions, isn't it? Yeah, but I thought like like I kept seeing articles saying it was dead creepy and people were feeling unnerved. But it wasn't I was really a wee, I was a wee bit unnerved at times. But I found it more funny than anything. Do you not think it was hilarious at times? Ah, uh, yeah, because I was like, oh, it's them, and then like two seconds later, no, it's them, and then two, no, it's them, shooting them again. It was pretty ridiculous. Um, what else have I been watching? I've also, from the same creator as that show, I've been watching the first season of American Horror Story, which is oh, absolutely, never, which is absolutely bonkers. I never watched that. Um, I did actually. I think I started watching it, the first American Horror Story, and uh, it's bonkers. Yeah, weird. Yeah. Are you, right. are you are you proud of me watching all these horror related shows? Yep, you're coming over to the side of the private. And <laughs> um, there's you... a couple of other things. Obviously, I'm still watching Andor weekly, and we'll do an end of season review in a few weeks' time. Mm-hmm. And I've got a uh, Tales of the Jedi to watch over the weekend. Um, what did so you yeah. watch? Um, did you watch? Did you watch the end of She Hulk? Yeah, I watched She Hulk as well. Yeah. What a crazy ending that was. Aye, that show was weird. Like, it was actually quite enjoyable to watch, but absolutely ridiculous. And It's not, like, good, but it's enjoyable, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's good for just, like, a good half hour your killing brain time, but the story's just... It's so, like, thin. Like... I thought the Daredevil episode was quite good. Yeah, apart from the walk of shame. <laughs> I thought it was funny. It was funny, but it's just like him walking with like his shoes off along the, the pavement. Like, why? Because that's what you do. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I think it's probably time. Um, so we should probably timestamp this nine minutes in. We'll start talking House of the Dragon. So we obviously reviewed the first maybe four episodes, maybe four or five, Something. and then we decided that. There wasn't getting that much traction, so we decided just to leave it and do an end of season review, which I think might be our model moving forward. Yeah, probably because it is quite time consuming doing all these kind of single episodes, especially yeah. if people aren't catching it. And then, yeah, I think the yeah, end of season reviews mixed in with different movies and having like our guests on, I think that's probably the best way forward. Yes, sounds like a plan, my man. So House of the Dragon. Let's talk the things we love, the things we like, the things that creeped us out, the things we didn't like, the things that confused us, uh, and our overall views and our hopes for the futures. So, a lot to, a lot to pack in. 
Okay. First of all, I really like the close knit family values of the show. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, how do you want to work this? You want to go all positives, then any negatives at the end, or just a mismatch? Okay. Sure. So I will positives, positive, positive, negatives, then we'll positive. all the things we like. Probably just mash it in between, mash it in altogether. Right. The the acting from I don't know, I don't remember any weak performances. I think the cast was fantastic, and there was a lot of standout performances, uh, particularly Big Paddy and uh, Matt Matt Smith as well, amongst others. Yeah. See, I don't know. Like, I did like Matt Smith, but I don't know. I seem to think everybody thinks he's amazing, but I didn't think he was any better than everybody else. And I feel like he got a lot less lines than most of them as well. It's because he didn't need them. True. He just smouldered. Um, I think he's funny, though. Some of his lines in that last episode... We, oh yeah, 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 we can't repeat here, but it was good. It involves tongues and peepees. Yeah, so I also thought the young Renera. I'm not saying the older one was bad, but I thought the young one gave a really strong performance. Yeah, Millie, um, Al- Millie Alcott was it? Millie, I was going to say Molly. Millie. Yeah. No, I think they. To be honest, I think they all did well, and the time skips worked well. The only thing I thought was a bit weird was the um the high tower kids. I think when they got older, they just they just didn't look like anything like they were younger. Yeah, because um, a- Eamon looked older than Aegon, and they end up. And David Tennant's son, he was Aegon, wasn't he? He was the younger Aegon. See where yeah. you said the time jumps worked. I I don't think it like interrupted the story, but I must admit, personally, I found it. I think there was too many kids being born in a short space of time, and it became really difficult because, especially when they were changing the actors, like episode by episode, it became really hard to keep track of who was who. And it was actually hurting my brain trying to remember how like Eamons and the the boy that ate by the dragon. Uh, so that he's his uncle, yeah, but it, we'll say this. Yeah. Um did you how how did you find keeping track of all the births? Because I, I totally forgot that Renera had two twin boys with Damon as well. No, but they didn't. Yeah, but they, they must have been Damon's. Yeah, and is one of them not called Aegon as well? Yeah, it's very confusing. Um, yeah, because um, is is one of the boys not? It's not his full name, but it's abbreviated to like Luke. It just sounded. Is that, is that not Luceris? Yeah, but they, I think they called him Luke quite a lot, and it just seemed really out of place. Yeah, because there's Luceris, Jaceris. I think that she called one Aegon as well, and. There's one, one called, called Viserys. Is there not a Joffrey as well? A Joffrey. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like, who, who's, where's he now? Yeah, he, oh, is he, one of the, is he one of the younger kids? Yeah, young, young kids. Because uh, that was... Um, what was his name? Um, Lenor. He named him Joffrey. Yeah, after, after his pal that his face battered him. Remember when we first started this podcast, uh, first started this series and we are like, oh yeah, so Kristen, he's going to be like a, a really nice guy and mm. he's probably going to die pretty soon and Otto Hightower seemed pretty like a, a stand-up guy and then it just all twisted on its head. I never really thought Otto was a stand-up guy because in like the first episode he tried to set his daughter up with the king, the grieving king. Yeah, Second movie. Because I remember watching it thinking like he was only kind of one speaking sense um, when it came to like the small council and stuff. Mm. He's a great character. He is. He is. He plays it very well. Um, he He's played by, is it Kieran Hines? Who played 
Luna Lovegood's dad in the Harry Potter series? I was going to say it was the guy in Notting Hill. No, well, he's probably been in other things as well, but that's what I knew him from. So, um, I, anytime I've seen him, he's always been like a, a total wacko and just like out his face on drugs or something, or just a, a total um, a little loser kind of thing. So it's quite funny seeing him in a kind of highborn setting. Do you think he's got a a big future death scene coming? I think so. I think it'd be I think it'd be the, like the hands of Damon or something like that. Because Damon hates him. There's talk that there's going to be four seasons of House of the Dragon. Yeah, do you think? I didn't think it would have that much legs in it. Is it going to just be? It's it's based on a book called Is it Fire and Blood? And apparently, what we've seen in season one is a really small part of the the whole book. I, I kind of want. I kind of want to buy the book and like read it up to where we are now to see like yeah. the differences. But I'm scared about spoilers at the same time. Yeah, well, that's that spoilers. That spoiler I heard about Renera. Oh. Uh, the Cody was talking about. I told Scarlett that, and she ended up like googling it, and then she went down a rabbit hole and spoiled so much for herself. Don't don't tell me if. Um... If that is the case, I don't know. I don't know. She didn't tell me because I told her to shut up. Do you not think it could quite easily not be true though? Because even just in the recent episodes, see the way Alison misjudged uh, the series' last words about Aegon. Do you not think quite easily Joffrey could have got the wrong end of the stick? Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying it yeah. wouldn't happen, but it could happen. Yeah. Or she could do a, a Lena and fake her own death or something. So apparently that's a change from the book. Oh, does he actually get killed apparently in the book? Apparently he does die in the book. And I like that they didn't kill him because it would have went really against Renera's character and the good relationship that they seem to have. Yeah. No. I agree on that one. Also, I'm really slow and didn't really clock that the guy in the boat was this, was him. <laughs> Because he just like, random guys in the boat. He was disguised, yes. I I quickly worked it out when I was listening to someone else's review afterwards. So there you go. Yeah. You're just lucky they didn't have DNA or uh, fingerprints back in the back in those days. Yeah. Or when it was. I, I feel sorry for the poor guard though that they just chucked in the fire in his place. I know. I was like, I was like, oh. um, about, was, I think he's even a guard. I think he's just a servant just walking along the hall. I know, because yeah. everyone, not, well, not you so much, but people tend to like Damon a lot, but he did murder his ex-wife with a rock, and he was strangling Renera in this episode as well. Yeah, I did read something, though, that it, it didn't, it, the, I think it was the actress that played Renera. She was saying that... Emma Darcy? He, yes, I think so. She was saying that she thought that he only, he only did it because he wasn't dealing with the grief of losing his brother. And, and, he was and he was jealous because he didn't know about the Song of Ice and Fire. Yeah, I do like the way that I like the way they included that because it does make this show in Game of Thrones feel a lot more coherent, having that mm-hmm. through line. Yeah. No, it's pretty. It is pretty cool. It's all interconnected, and I'm quite interested to see how how they can try and prepare for that through this show, and see how it all goes mm. wrong. I'd imagine. Yeah, and also the it's been confirmed there's going to be a Jon Snow show. Try saying that really fast, by the way. Set after Game of Thrones, which will maybe tidy up the whole Prince that was promised prophecy a bit more. So where did he end up? Did he end up back in the wall? Back at the wall, yeah. So I think he's going to assassinate Bran, take the Iron Throne. I think, I don't know if this is right, I've got a feeling that, I could be totally wrong here, I've got a feeling that show might come out before the second season of House of the Dragon because it seems that 
how it seems like the Game of Thrones franchise is going down the Star Wars route a bit more, and I'm all for it. Um, I never really thought we would get any more Game of Thrones related content, so this show has been a real pleasant surprise. Yeah, so I thought after season eight of Game of Thrones, I thought they'd be more hesitant to make more shows and they might compromise on the quality of it to try and appease the people that didn't like season eight, like try and fill it with more, um, I don't know, like set pieces and show pieces and stuff rather than the actual good story. How have you felt? I know you're Mr. Action Man and even myself at times, I've got a bit frustrated with the show when they, they hint at a big showdown and then nothing happens and it's, it happened a few times although it does give great attention to the show i think i could maybe have done with a wee bit more action in this season what was your view as like a an action buff yeah i think because of the scope of it like because we're talking about like it's really just like two halves of the same family isn't it mm-hmm. you can really have much well because it wasn't even a war at that time it was just a, a dispute really and the only time that was really fighting was in the steps though, which i thought was a good distraction but i think in the context of it it was probably right that there wasn't so much action and more politics because you couldn't have all these family members basically killing each other off before because if it's going to last four seasons it's got a lot of long way to go. Yeah. yeah. Now, I was just interested to see your point of view on that, but I do agree. I think season two will be more about the war. And I saw somewhere today that season two is going to be paced like seasons three to six of Game of Thrones, apparently. Oh, happy days. Um, so that's what that's going to be more like. But it's just... It's going to be a long wait, though. 2024, I think, until season two comes out. Yeah, I've got plenty of shows to tide us over until then. Yeah, there's always yeah, there's always stuff coming up. What about the the queen that never was? I thought she was a really strong character. Yeah, she was just working away in the background all the time, wasn't she? Uh, Renice isn't. Is it Renice? Renice, yeah. Although I'm still a bit kind of, I don't know, if you if you suspected that Renera was complicit in your son's death, I don't know, I'd, would, would you be standing by her side, even like, just because they took an oath? Mm, she's not, she's not like, like she, she didn't like bend the knee, so she wasn't like fully supporting her, but she does seem to think that Renera, like remember that scene they were talking about how she was the only one like trying to keep the realm together instead of tearing it apart yeah holding uh, keeping her restraint but I know what you mean if she essentially killed her son then she wouldn't be too happy about it do you think Renera will tell Renice that her son's alive do you think the son will come back into the war because he's a good warrior with another dragon yeah I wonder what. But he didn't take his dragon with him, did he? Mm, probably not if he's on the boat. But do you think him, or do you think he's just going to have a kind of happily ever after kind of storyline? I don't know. I seen a picture where somebody said it was like Grey Worm's dad. <laughs> Grey Worm's great on great grandpa or something. Um, I don't know. It could be because he might because they could have easily just killed him off. Yeah. So maybe it does come back. I thought it was I really liked the way they tied the step stones back into the main story because at first I thought it was just one of those plot points that doesn't go anywhere, but the fact that they now control the narrow, narrow sea is obviously going to be really important. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad the uh, Coralus came back into it. So I thought he was just gonna die off screen somewhere mm-hmm. in the last episode. Yeah, I like the Valerian family. They add an, another new dynamic because they're like he he. 
I think he's maybe I think he said he's given up now, but he obviously wanted the throw-in for them as well. So they're kind of quite sneaky and conniving in the background. Yeah. I thought he'd be more cut up that his brother uh got the old key for as well. Aye, that was a this is maybe a good chance to talk about some of those because although there wasn't as many, there were still a few memorable deaths, wasn't there? Just Damon taking his head off, saying he could yep. keep his hands or something like that. Keep his tongue. Ah, his tongue, yeah, sorry. Um, that was... Did I send you that meme that was just like half of his head? No, but I sent it now. Oh, it was just like... I, maybe I didn't. I guess I did the alien then. I sent it to somebody. Um, the Sir Kristen, your lookalike, uh, taking out Joffrey was was quite a. That was probably quite a brutal Game of Thrones moment. Yeah, and it just kind of totally out of the blue because it was at a, was it the wedding? Wasn't no, it was a. Was that yeah, right? that Joffrey guy who was like the lover of. Uh, yeah, no. Lenor basically said, like, I know your secret. Like, he knew that she, he was like in love with Renera, and he just, yeah, he just snapped. And then he went from being probably most one of most people's favorite characters to um, probably most people's least favorite character now. Yeah, he's just very bitter, but you know, you get knocked back at a young age, you just carry it on forever. There were some great tense scenes, though, wasn't there? At, like the meetings where they were like deciding who was going to get the step zones, who was going to be the successor, and the dinner scene. So Viserys' last dinner, when like um, his sons started making jibes at the the strong boys and things like that. That was quite yeah. intense. <laughs> See when they're talking about that and they were saying like Lord Strong, I was like. Why is he calling him that? Like, is he not that strong? <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot. His, his daddy is Lord Strong. Yeah, that was a their dad's death. Um, and who who's the other person that dad died? Their grandpa. Yeah. When a uh, club clubfoot took them out, that was. Now that we're talking about it, there is actually, I think maybe because we watched it over 10 weeks, there was a lot of big moments, like him setting Harren Hall on fire. Yeah. What was, uh, what was his name again? Is it Laris? Laris, yeah. He's the younger brother, isn't he? So it's like a combination of Littlefinger and Varys. <laughs> I suppose, yeah. He's no, George R.R. Just... Martin is just great with these names. I know. Um, so but see, see when the he sent all those prisoners to kill uh, his family at Harren Hall oh. and they were wearing like the wee bug kind of brooches mm -hmm. is that not something to do with Helena or is it Helena the Aegon's sister slash wife um, I'm not sure. Because she was like, she was playing about with bugs, or is it because she's kind of a bit like she can tell the future, kind of? She's a bit weird, isn't she? Yeah, because you've seen the, the memes like where she talks in like riddles, but it's like kind of foreboding for the future. Right, okay. Yeah, I saw something about that. The, the very first scene we saw her, and I thought she was the like spitting image of the younger Renera, the, the Millie version. Yeah. But I think did they change her actor as well? I think you got slightly older, I think. You okay? So, You're looking a bit spooked. No, I was just checking what the cat was up to. Nothing good. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like we've never really done these end of season reviews, so there's there's uh, just random plot points and characters just keep popping yeah. into my head. Well, at the start of the season you weren't too happy with the CGI with the dragons. How did you feel the CGI uh, turned out on the, the final episode? Yeah, I, th I thought they looked better in the more recent episodes compared to the first. Yeah. 
the animators must have had a bit more time. <laughs> yeah, they obviously have to pick their moments to use in the dragons because of budget budget constraints. But I thought that the stuff with the dragons and the the finale was really good with the Vagar appearing in the, the clouds above. Yeah. A wee, wee bit of a horror vibe for you. Against the wee Tote Araxis. Yeah, so yeah, that's um that's the what, young what was sorry, can you go? That's the young prince gone. Were you shocked at, were you shocked at that happening? Oh yeah, I thought maybe the dragon like Araxis was gonna get like injured or killed and maybe Lucerus was gonna survive. But uh it was a wee bit of a shock eye. Eh? And that's Aegon basically started the war. And not uh, Aegon, Aemon. Uh, because uh, Damon and Renera find out at the end of the episode what happened. And I didn't really think about it at the time because I don't really think that deeply about the plot points. But people were saying <laughs> bits of the dragon washed up at um, Dragonstone. Storms Storms, no, Dragonstone. Dragonstone, was it? Because he, he was on the it, way, he was on the way back to them. Yeah, when he got taken out. Uh, what a what a way to go though. He was a nice wee boy as well, wasn't he? On the whole. Yeah, but it was always them two that were always inflaming things. Him and Eamon. Yeah, since they were younger, because Eamon was. A bit of a loser when he was younger, wasn't he? Like they were giving him the the pig, was Thanks. it? And saying he would never get a dragon, and then they age him up, and then he goes and steals. No, he, he hasn't aged up yet when he steals the dragon, is he? Never steals no. the dragon at his one of his relatives' funerals. Yeah, it was Damon's wife at the time, wasn't it? No. Uh, what's her name? Bela. No. Oh God, I don't know. Nice. You 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 said you liked the time jumps, but I think it was just it was so hard to keep track of who's who. Um, no, two, I, I did like the time jumps, but it's just like you're saying, like every time there was a time jump, aye. some girls seem to have like two more kids. To I don't know. Where. I guess it's like real life as well. I suppose if those time jumps had happened, world building. There's two things I'd quite like to discuss: is um, the scene with the kids fighting where Eamon loses his eye. That was. Quite a memorable scene as well. Yeah, that was quite brutal. Um, I don't think we Eamon had it in him to take on. Was it four of them, wasn't it? Yeah, and uh, Alison going mental at the in the in the hall, wanting to take out the wee boy's eye as well. Oh yeah, and he ends up cutting Renera on the wrist. That scene was that was a very intense scene and obviously a big theme because you were getting on to uh, damon's third wife because he had his yeah. first wife and then he took a second wife and then he married the valerian and now he's with renera so it's fourth wife fourth wife so childbirth was a big theme in this show and the brutality of it in those times i uh, some quite unsavoury uh, scenes um, especially that last episode yeah because it starts the show starts obviously with Viserys' wife dying and him having to make the decision uh, whether to save his wife or have the child and then obviously Renera having I saw somewhere that the, the, her stress about hearing her dad died is that what caused her to have the miscarriage? I think it was between that and her getting told that Aegon had usurped the throne. Yeah, that's another big scene, isn't it? When Renice came in in the dragon and could have torched the whole the whole bird. I know. I was like, what? <laughs> we were just both sitting. Me and Scarlett were sitting there going, like, why didn't she just do it? Because plot. Because <clears throat> more books. Um, um, I Aegon, was, like, he's a horrible wee guy. He does some unsavory things, but 
he clearly didn't want to be king until he got the sword and then suddenly he was like yeah i'm the man yeah so i don't think he'll be long for the world <clears throat> i don't maybe see him lasting very long mm, i don't know i think you think um, allison will protect them from everything i didn't actually realize until i looked back uh see the actress that played allison earlier in the series yes i didn't realize how different she looked i've just got so used to the current actress that i totally forgot that she did look used to look quite different mm. well, i think it's no well, yeah it, you can tell you can tell the difference but like they're pretty close together is that olivia cook is it mm. I think so. What's your view on the... Because the recasting was quite a big thing at the time. What's your view on the, the change of actors? Well, I think I said this in an earlier episode. Of it. I didn't mind it because... Like, I kept seeing it like well in advance on like social media that there was a time skip happening and there's quite publicised and you've seen the actresses and actors like beside each other all the time. Uh, and so yeah, I was pretty well prepared. Uh, I think if it was just like you didn't know anything about it and you just went in blind and just suddenly Millie Alcock is just a completely different person, you're like, where's she going? Who are you? I think I preferred the younger Renera, but I like the older Alison Bear as actresses. Yeah, probably. Do you know they're saying the older Renee is just a bit too serious? Yeah. So, I, I know. Like, you've, got, you've got to be now these days. I don't like does that to you, but she kind of lost all that kind of innocence and wonder that she had. But I suppose life kind of did that to her. Yep, everybody's bams. Uh, there was also the the crazy episode where she goes when she's younger goes into the town of Damon and then. Do you know what's funny though? It was such a big deal at the time, but then she got married to Damon later on, and no one batted an eyelid. Yeah, I don't know if it was just because like she was like a child. I just it's, they've got such weird standards because they'll quite happily mar like Damon's going to marry his sister and the younger strong boys are marrying their cousins. Cousin. No, except, no, it would not be step sisters no, because uh, their dad got married. Their dad got married to their mum. No, Damon got married to their mum. So step sisters. I've given up trying to keep track of it, but I don't know. I just find that a bit weird that it was such a big deal. Maybe, yeah, you're right because she was a child, but you thought maybe he still wouldn't be very happy with it, even as an adult. Yeah, I think everybody was just like, you know what? We knew it was going on, so we're <laughs> fine with it now. We're totally fine with it. Yeah. Um, the series' final episode was great, wasn't it? Well, horrific, because he looked horrendous with missing an eye. But when he arrives in the throne room and he does the walk up and he's ready to to take um, the sea snake's brother out, even though he can barely move himself. Yeah, he did come. He did come to the end. He, he acted actually really well. Um, quite a powerful performance from old Paddy Boy. Uh, his his scenes were hard to watch though, with the the leeches and the sponge baths. Yeah. So what did you say before? Like, what was actually wrong with him? I read somewhere. I read somewhere that it was like a kind of lep sort of leprosy kind of disease. Okay. Which is and horrendous. Then, that's what leprosy is like. Yeah. Well, Scarlett was telling me as well that apparently in the books, Alison is ten years older than Renera. Right. Uh, and also that Viserys is all meant to be a lot younger in the books. He was known as the young king. Right. And they made him look a lot older for this. Yeah, because I don't. I heard somewhere earlier today that Alison and Renera weren't actually that close in the books, but they added that for the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
They've made oh. quite a lot of interesting decisions to There's a cat. To the books, but I think they've worked out pretty well so far. Yeah. No, it's been good. Um I'm really I think I think everyone I speak to that watches it is quite enjoying it. You always get some people that are gonna I see some people comment saying it's it's boring, nothing happened. I'm like, are you he's watching the same show? Like Actually I think see if there's something out there, somebody's just gonna hate it no matter what. Like it could be the best thing that's ever been made and somebody will be like, Oh, this is terrible, like one star. Um mm. Like I'm quite I'm quite cynical, like when it comes to things, but I'm I'm really loving the show. Like when it comes to like Sunday nights, Monday Monday nights, I'm like, right, you can watch House of the Dragon. Um, no. My cat just knocked down. You just knocked down Walter Smith's autograph and the anniversary of his death. You bad cat. Sorry. <laughs> that isn't a bad omen. I don't know what it is. You just knocked it down. What does, what does it mean? Um. Yeah, so like even like when I'm watching like Andor, like I keep seeing people saying like oh it's boring and stuff, but this is probably like the most in depth like Star Wars show we've like had like character wise. Like hmm. it's just so fascinating. Um Episode six was definitely not boring. Uh what one was that again? The the heist. Oh yeah, the heist, yeah. Like there's a lot of setup, but the payoffs are like well worth it. Hmm. No, I, I'm a big Star Wars nerd, so I really I enjoy all the wee references and um all the all the small moments. But I, I can see why people who aren't mega fans might find it a wee bit slow. I think because we are quite clued up on things, we probably enjoy it more because of that. Yeah, I think people well, are just like, oh, it's not got laser swords in it, so it's rubbish. Probably similar to this show as well. I feel like if you haven't watched Game of Thrones, you might not enjoy it as much because it's all the wee mentions, isn't it? But like the Baratheons and the Starks, which also leads us into it was cool going to. Did we ever go to like Storm's End, like that actual that hall kind of castle? Did we, did we ever actually go there in Game of Thrones? Because you heard about Storm. About. You heard about Storm's End quite a lot. Yeah, I think I think it's talked about, but I have, I don't think we ever went there. I think it's quite cool that we see like uh, uh what's the word? An ancestor of like Robert Baratheon. So that guy must be his great 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 great, great, great. Um so the other strong boy I'm not even gonna try and remember is he Jahiris? Just series. Yeah, that one. Jace, Jace Um, he's went to Winterfell, so I've heard that we'll, we'll be not us, but um, Winterfell will be in season two. Yeah, that would be good. Um, see what Winterfell is like back in the day. Maybe see the wall as well, possibly. Yeah, the the Lord of Winterfell is meant to be quite young in this. I think. Oh, I think I did uh, Rhaenyra not say that um, mm -hmm. he was quite close to Jaceris' age. Do, do you think they should have sent the boys to opposite places, sent the older one to Storm's End? To be honest, I think they should have sent them in pairs. It was a bit brash, wasn't it? Like sending your children off to do this on their own with absolutely no backup. Yeah. Plus, I was thinking... Like when they were like, oh yeah, we'll go we'll send these messages. I was thinking, um, because Otto Hightower had already said that he was sending out offers to all the other houses and they were all going to be responding. So I don't know why they thought sending the boys now would be any different. Mm. I think she was just. Acting quite brashly to what had been happening. Yeah, but how, how scary was it? Well, not scary, but like ominous when he first lands and he yeah. looks and he can just see uh, Vagar in the distance and he's massive. I said that to Ailey, I said, was there not another, was that not a different dragon that we saw 
like parked outside. Yeah. Um, if it was good, um, did you like the intro having the kind of Game of Thrones theme? Uh, yeah, it wasn't quite as um, informative as the Game of Thrones because, like, the Game of Thrones intro was always good for me because I could always like figure out where everything was happening on the map. Um, Gives you that wee bit of hate, though, doesn't it? At the start yeah. of the episode. See the see like the blood running through all the mm-hmm. like bits and pieces. Is that the the model that Viserys is making? No. It could be. I wonder what became of that. Oh, did you like the new map? By the way, the kind of light up map at um, Dragonstone. I was going to say that. Actually, I was going to say how cool was that table, mm. and hey, can we get one? Can we get it? Yeah, that could be our podcasting table. Need something with a skilled hand. We can make one. Yeah. Right. Um, ranking out of 10, how would you rate House of the Dragon season one? Season one, season one. Uh, I'm going to say a good solid eight. I was going to go 8 as well, but I might go 8.5 because my main things were just the time jump, making things a wee bit messy at times and maybe not as much action as they they maybe hinted at. But it's pretty small gripes, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's like like you're saying, there's always like kind of moments where there's like standoffs and it never, nothing ever happened. It was kind of a bluff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where it was threatening to boil over and it just never did. Um, and the names are confusing as hell. Yeah, but that's not the show's fault. That's yeah. George, that's George's fault. Yeah, the source material. Um, you get George R. R. Martin on. No, he's too busy trying to finish his books. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. And it was, sometimes it felt like it was a wee bit slow in places, but. You know, it was good. It was a good solid show. Uh, good characters again. Um, I like it when you have shows where you just hate people because of how well they act. Like mm-hmm. Allison and the uh, Laris can't stand them. Every time I see them, I just want to slap them in the face. But... I don't think Allison's that bad. Like she was actually quite. She was really upset actually when Viserys died, which I didn't really expect her to be. So I don't think she's totally heartless. No, I thought she'd be celebrating, <laughs> but no. Um, no, she seemed generally quite upset by it. I was so mad though, see when Viserys died and he said about the the king that we should, what was it, the king, the prince? The prince was promised. And all that kind of stuff, and Nelson took the wrong way. Mm. I was thinking, no way does this show go this direction just because Viserys was a bit out of his mind. But then it turns out the small council was already planning to uh, usurp the throne. Yeah, let's be honest. Otto's basically the in charge, isn't he, of the realm? He's the Tywin Lannister. Yeah, he's the, the puppet master. Oh, I can't believe I almost forgot one of my main critiques of the show, and it's I'm glad I remembered it. I'll go 8 2, and I, hopefully it's something they maybe fix or they might not fix I felt this show lacked some of the charm and levity of Game of Thrones because when you think of Game of Thrones you think of some of the hounds lines you think of everything Tyrion says you think of uh, Samuel Tarly you think of Bronn great kind of comic relief characters I feel like everyone in this show is really serious and there's not really any, there's no like, real notable comic relief in the show. Yeah, actually, that's probably something I never noticed. The only time you get it in really is when the kids are messing around with each other. Damon's quite funny, but he's more, he'll say just really harsh, kind of brutal things. He's not like jokey like Tyrion was. I think it's because we've been re watching the, the earlier seasons of Game of Thrones, and when you're seeing all Tyrion's one-liners and Bronn, some of Bronn's lines, it's it does make you miss that kind of light-hearted tone a wee bit. Not that Game of Thrones did have quite a light-hearted tone for like 
quite a lot of it or certain characters did anyway yeah when certain characters got together it was like Brian and Jamie. yeah and Podrick well there was quite a few characters that were, were quite light-hearted and uh, Tormund as the show I think he went too silly but I love well. Tormund uh, yeah. yeah, I think this show could do with a wee injection of humour. Well, I don't know if the humour's going to crank up now that the war's going to start. Yeah, and it's a shame though, because I don't know. Uh, I was just waiting for uh, Aegon to go oopsie doopsie. <laughs> when, maybe, uh, maybe, the younger, maybe the younger generation will have a bit of wit about them as they get older. I don't know. I just can't see it getting any lighter because the stakes are getting higher. I'll still watch it, obviously, but that is what, and I'm glad I remembered that because that was one of my main critiques I had in mind when it came to doing this review. Mm -hmm. No, I can't really think of it. And that didn't really like. Um... No, it wasn't. This... There hasn't really been anything I can think of that was a real stickler for me. I just think uh, the lack of, like you're saying, the lack of action for me is probably why it's not like further up. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I think that will will do us for this evening. So hopefully you enjoyed our review of House of the Dragon season one. I definitely enjoyed discussing it. There was a lot to discuss. And you can check this out on YouTube and you can see our lovely faces and my new cool background with my Mandalorian canvas. And you can also listen to this on audio on Spotify, Good Pods, Anchor, Amazon Music, Audible, Google Pods, Apple Pods, and all the pods. And you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you like, comment, share. And all that good stuff. Yeah, and uh, I think we were talking about like classic movies and stuff earlier on. If, if there's anyone that has any suggestions for any movies they want us to do, or uh, just in general have any suggestions, yeah, give us a wee shout. And if you like what you hear and you want to support us, we also have a Buy Me A Coffee page. Is, is that Buy Me A Coffee forward slash Seismic Cinema? Yes, it was. We're still at five pounds. We're still at five pound. Hey, it's five more pound than we had last time. Although it disappeared on the app. I don't know where it is now anyway. Um I don't quite know how the app works. So you embezzled after this, you're embezzling and telling yeah. us a technical difficulty. Yeah, I paid for a light bulb with it today. <laughs> uh, right. Um so yeah, it's been good getting back into it. Um we can decide what we're doing next week so make sure you check this episode out and obviously if you're hearing this you've already checked it out so wait a bit break the fourth wall Colin so Paul can you tell us what our slogan is at the end of this mega episode yep it's the power of eating children and dragons it's also the power of escapism but um, Paul hasn't learned from his, his ban last week yet yeah and uh, you know who should have had the power of escapism Luceris, but he didn't he didn't escape. Oh well. That was a shame. Right, thank you for listening and we'll see you um in the future. Thanks for listening. <laughs>